Hello, warriors of the War Astro Channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about a drone that is still very little known in the West, but has recently entered service with the Russian armed forces and is causing significant damage to Ukraine's air defense. I'm talking about the Garan drone. But before we begin, I wanted to tell you that I am Commander Robinson Farinas, a Navy Reserve military officer, and this is the War Channel, a platform for military and strategic analyses conducted by experts. So if you're new here, subscribe to our channel and give us a like. That said, let's introduce the Garan to our audience. Look folks, there is still little information. Most of the information we have comes from Ukrainian intelligence, you can see here. Most of the information indeed comes from the Ukrainians. What is known is that this drone is made with parts available on the civilian market. So you buy a modem, you buy the electronic circuits, etc. And it has a great advantage. It is largely based on the Iranian Shahed-136 model, but at a fraction of the cost. Some people say it's 10% of the cost of the Shahed. It's hard for us to measure that, because we can't really know the cost of the Shahed, right? But what happens? It is made of plywood and plastic, so it's very difficult to detect such a drone. In fact, wooden military drones are becoming a very attractive solution, not only because of the cost, right? But because they are difficult to detect, they are quite light meaning you spend less energy to keep these artifacts in the air. But what are the main advantages of the Garan as far as we know? What happens is that Russia uses the Garan as a form of saturation. So, they launch a fairly large number of these drones. Ukrainian air defense becomes overwhelmed because it knows there's something there, but it can't determine if it's a Shahed, which carries an explosive payload, or a Giran, which even if carrying an explosive payload, will be small. Its job, in fact, is pure and simple, saturation and testing of Ukraine's air defenses. And there's something interesting. These drones work with those mesh modems, which we often see in hotels. They are modems that help transmit Wi-Fi signals. So, what happens? It becomes difficult to jam them because they exchange signals among themselves. You would have to jam all of them, actually. You can't. They say these drones are a nightmare for Ukrainian air defenses. Now, the main advantage for Russia with this type of equipment is that they are very cheap and easy to build. It seems that the Russians took a design from a Chinese company. I was seeing the other day on a Ukrainian site people saying, oh, but Russia can't even make a drone without China. The United States doesn't make planes without China. This is the truth. So folks, these things are very complicated. Observing this and trying to frame it as a sign of weakness, I think is somewhat stupid. I believe that whatever Russia can get from the civilian market to turn into an efficient and cheap weapon of war, they will do. Because what happens is something that people think very little about. One of the most difficult things to deal with in military art is saturation. If you take, for example, the tribal wars that the British fought in Africa, Asia, etc., Whenever they lost, it was because the enemy managed to saturate the battlefield with a larger number of combatants. And then disaster happened. Let's take the Battle of the Alamo in Texas. There's also the Battle of Camarón in Mexico, with the Foreign Legion against the Mexicans. There was an absurd number of Mexicans, both in the Battle of Camarón and the Battle of the Alamo. This is the principle of saturation. And the Russians think a lot about this, about the saturation of the battlefield. I was watching the other day that movie Cross of Iron, which I always say is the best war movie ever made, the most realistic. It shows this well. It's a battle in the minds of a bunch of Cubans to cross the Kerch Strait and the Russians saturating the German positions with artillery. 
because they know that if they saturate, sooner or later the enemy will end up breaking. That's what is sought, to break the enemy's will. In the case of the Duran, what is their function? The Ukrainians have a limited amount of air defense, whether kinetic, like the Jepard, the Patriot systems, etc., or electronic warfare. But with this system, they are making the Ukrainians spend more and more of their resources. We have to remember that just around the corner, there's a citizen named Donald Trump who threatens to stop funding Ukraine. So anything the Russians do to wear down Ukraine's armed forces will be valid. And another thing, something we've noticed, this drone started appearing at the end of last year. I believe that now, almost three months later, Ukraine already has some solutions, at least specific ones, to counterbalance this type of equipment. Ukrainians are very resourceful. We have no doubts about that. I always emphasize Ukraine is the best army NATO has. I have no doubt about that. So they must have already counterbalanced something. But the whole problem is the quantity. Even if you have efficient methods against your enemy, if they launch a very large quantity, it will be difficult for you to effectively deal with it. Here we are talking again about saturation. Let me see if I can get an image from Ukrainian sites for you, showing the Garen up close for us to take a look. So here it is, folks, what has been discovered so far. I know it's quite simple. Okay, it's a very simple drone, bold design, but it's something very simple, very easy to make and reproduce industrially. Okay, and so Russia is making the most of it in terms of new cheap devices to saturate the enemy. We made a video yesterday about the T-5455 tank, and when we look at it, we see that's exactly it. The T-54 is not an ultra-sophisticated tank, but it is easy to produce, so much so that 100,000 units have already been manufactured. This ends up making a difference, and it's something we need to start thinking about in Brazil. I see people considering very complex solutions, a super fighter jet, and so on. But if we look, for example, at what's happening in the Red Sea, the military solutions the Houthis employ against the American Navy are not so complex. They are available solutions. That's the truth. Perhaps one of the most important words is availability. Or as we always say here, Galante's theorem, from Alexandre Galante of Poder Naval, good enough. And it seems, it seems that the Duran is good enough to saturate Ukraine's air defenses. So folks, that was our video for today. Comment here if you have additional information about the Duran. Geranium is a plant, okay folks? By the way, Russians really like to give plant names to their weapons. You have the, the geranium, the Popo Arieshny. They are plants, vegetables, flowers, etc. It's quite interesting in Russian military culture. But right here, give your impressions about Jeron. Tell us where you are speaking from, which city, which state. Help our channel grow, comment, share. If you can give a super sticker, a super chat, you contribute to the growth of our media. Below, there's also PIX, which bypasses YouTube's restrictions. I need to remind you that we also have a school of courses, with excellent courses on drones, rockets, etc. And our little store here at the Arte de Guerra channel, where you can buy books through Amazon and help our channel. Lastly, I need to remind you that the link to the English version of the Arte de Guerra channel is already in the description and is live. Let's subscribe to help the growth of our media. We'll be back shortly then, always with responsibility and commitment and faith in Brazil, folks. See you later.